Masha's spooky stories. Look at that! See how terrible the lightning flashes are? How about the awful thunder rumbles? Are you scared? Now it will be even scarier! This story took place in early May, for the first spring thunder sounds. Well, maybe we should start from the beginning. One day in the spring, and in an unusually hot sunset hour, Vanya sat on a bench in the park. He was drinking a refreshing apricot soda, babbling something under his breath. It's so hot and muggy. If only it would rain a few little drops. I would give anything just to make the weather get a little bit cooler. I would give up my smartphone or my gamepad. I would even give up my whole computer. As soon as he said that, bam! There was a lightning flash. There was a thunder crack and an incredible roar was heard. Now there were thunders, lightning, pouring rain and hail. Vanya was already sorry he asked for rain. He couldn't hold it and started crying and whining like a little baby. Oh, I'm just so scared. Because Vanya was afraid of thunderstorms, when a lightning flashed, he was immediately in tears. Poor Vanya tried to close his eyes tight, but he was still able to see the lightning light. In horror, he plucked his ears, but he was still able to hear the thunder roar. And then, even more frightening than thunder, a penetrating voice boomed right from above. Are you feeling scared now? Well, it could get even worse. I am the fairy tale King Koshi. I love scaring children more than anything else. You could say, I command the loud thunder, flashy lightning, and all the gloomy clouds around. Vanya looks at Koshi, but he doesn't understand anything. All he knows is that Koshi isn't joking, which makes him even more frightened. Is it the rain falling like a waterfall? Didn't you ask for it to be cool? Flashing lightning is striking, but doesn't the air feel refreshing? Now make good on your promise. It's time to hand over your computer, your smartphone, and your gamepad, or I'll make the thunder and lightning even worse. It's up to you to make that decision. Vanya was trembling with fear like a rabbit's tail. Oh, I'll have to give up all my electronic gadgets. I won't have my favorite game at all because I'm afraid of the thunderstorm. Then, out of nowhere, who is she? Oh, Vasilisa the Wise. She looked at Koshi, at the lightning, and all the gloomy clouds. She listened to the thunder. And finally, she said to Vanya, Hey, come on, my friend, let's go. You don't need to be afraid. This is exactly why the lightning rod was invented. Vanya looks up and realizes that Koshi is still shooting lightning. But none of them hit the floor. They're all going to the lightning rods. Vasilisa sent Vanya in front of her, and then she told him, Remember, there are simple rules to be followed. Lightning is electricity, and electricity is subject to the laws of physics. Number one. You cannot be out on the street using your mobile phone during a thunderstorm. Number two, this is a well-known and widespread rule. Being near a pond during a storm would be very dangerous. Number three, you must never walk in an open field, especially under an umbrella. Because that umbrella has its rod and framework made out of metal. And the metal is a good conductor of electricity. Lightning strikes more often on elevated points. So be careful. You must never hide under a tree standing all alone in a field. You could be hit by lightning if you are hiding under a tree like that. Plus, wind gusts could knock down the tree right on top of you. Bang! Tree down! Smart people have been researching where lightning usually strikes. So all we have to do is avoid these dangerous places. Vanya wasn't afraid anymore. He felt safe and even started to smile. The rules are so simple. There's nothing to be afraid of. Koshi kept throwing lightning and rumbling thunder, but all he accomplished with that was getting soaked in cold under all that rain. He growled, threatened, and threw a royal tantrum, but that got him nowhere. He finally understood that all he could do was go back to his kingdom far, far away, 
with no gamepad, computer, or smartphone to help pass the time. If there's a thunderstorm with lightning, just remember these simple rules. Don't panic. Please follow them, and you'll have no reason to be afraid. Now, if you decide not to follow them, please don't forget to carry your own personal lightning rod. Dear friends, today I'm going to tell you a very creepy tale about useful inventions. Once upon a time, there was Grinko, who had seen enough horror stories on TV about Mega Brain that conquered the Earth with the help of horrific mechanical monsters. But in honest truth, we've been surrounded by all this technology for a long time. And now it's just scary to think what might happen. What if the refrigerator starts to hum threateningly? Like if it wants to eat the smartest boy? And what if the elevator, instead of opening the doors automatically, opened an iron jaw? What if my TV does not just broadcast normal signals, but also emits zombie signals? The vacuum cleaner vacuums you. The washing machine spins you around. The iron steams and even irons you. And since then, he began to feel really scared. He saw the escalators in the subway station. Kinko's frightened of the buses hissing doors. Even in the summer, the rides of the amusement park had began to seem like terrible steel monsters with grabbing tentacles and sharp teeth. That made Grinko panic and look at the amusement park from far away. But the summer was over and it was time to go back to school. At the beginning of the new school year, all children signed up for different clubs. But there was one particular group, which not even one child wanted to sign up for. It was a very strange and very suspicious name for a school club. Skillful Hands. So Grinko didn't sign up for the club either. He decided he wouldn't sign up for anything. Well, as if it wasn't enough, the scariest thing began to happen. The homeroom teacher came and commanded, Grinko, since you did not sign up for any of the school clubs, you're going to join in the Skillful Hands. Nothing could be done. So Grinko went to Skillful Hands meeting, and fear grabbed a hold of him immediately. Left and right, there were huge and menacing looking machines. They were all made of cold, shining metal. At any minute now, they will start whistling, rattling, and howling. <coughs> Grinko closed his eyes with fright, and suddenly, he hears a voice. Well, finally, at least someone came to me. <laughs> it's Mega Brain, the master of all mechanical monsters. Grinko looked around and immediately grabbed a hammer that was close to him. This is what he would use to protect himself, just in case. And Mega Brain said, Well, aren't you clever? Before grabbing a tool, you need to familiarize yourself with the safety instructions. Gringo jumped in complete amazement. With his eyes wide opened, he asked, Is this equipment completely safe and all? I know that sometimes equipment is very dangerous to operate. Ha ha ha! Dear boy, now you'll need to be able to operate any machine you may find in the whole world. The first and most important thing that you have to be aware of and follow is the Manual of Understanding the Safety Rules. And now, if you follow these very important rules, you won't need to fear any machines at all. And indeed, Grinko began to study the rules and eventually learned all he needed to know about all the tools, machines, and equipment. And most important, he was so interested that he spent all his free time working in the club. And yes, you cannot imagine what a useful thing Grinko invented while he was working in there. It was so useful that everyone's jaws were dropped. Friends, 
carefully. If you learn this stuff very well and aren't afraid of machines, then you can invent very useful things for people to use in their daily routines. Just a hint, don't be afraid to show your amazing ideas. Go out there and conquer the world, obviously in a good way. And don't forget to follow the safety rules manual. Today, I'm going to tell you a very scary story. After I'm done, you won't be able to fall asleep. Not in the day, and not in the night, and not even in the morning after you eat. A nice plate of warm porridge. You still won't be able to sleep. And it all happened at a children's summer camp when a very fun boy arrived. All the children in the camp were having fun. But this boy knew how to have a lot of fun. He spent all day running and jumping around. It was like he received an electric shock. Or maybe he had never any batteries. And later that evening, it was all dark outside. The streets were very quiet and scary. Full of wolves howling on the other side of the fence. And strangers who you should never talk to. And yet, this boy did not want to sleep. His batteries just wouldn't die. So he decided to pass the time telling horrifying, spooky stories. Stories about a black, black hand and white, white ghosts. About a door to a dungeon, a coffin on wheels, and ghouls covered in hair. The boy told everyone, all the children, these very scary tales. Then he calmly fell asleep, and in no time, he was dreaming. All of a sudden, he dreamed of a black hand. He jumped, scared in bed, and looked all around. And to his surprise, coming out from under the bed was a real black hand. The nails were long, dirty, and uncut. Ew, disgusting. The boy decided to run away from it, but then he stumbled and fell because under the other bed, a black leg was sticking out. The boy got up, and right in front of him, there was a ghost wearing glasses. It was completely white and totally scary. What should he do? Jumping, he went from one bed to the other. He opened the door and went screaming and running away from the body parts. He had decided it was better to take his chances with the wolves and the strangers, who you should never, ever talk to. He was running and screaming through the streets when he was spotted by the headlights of a coffin on wheels. He continued running towards an alley, but the headlights were still chasing him. The boy was terrified. He kept running and screaming. Suddenly, he heard a loud voice coming from the coffin on wheels. Stop! What are you doing? Why aren't you asleep? He's trapped! The boy couldn't escape. With his back against the canteen wall, the boy closed his eyes, thinking everything was over. Now, a vampire will come out from the coffin to suck my blood. But there was no blood sucking. It was a camp counselor's vampire voice that said, I'm wondering what are you doing, Mr. Scary? You're frightening all the campers with your silly scary tales. Look around, you have scared them all. Mr. Blackhand climbed under his bed. Mr. Ghost hid his head under the sheets. And the Blackfoot locked himself in the bathroom and is so afraid that no one can make him come out. You have even pulled a joke on me, the director of the whole camp. While I had to chase after you up and down the camp, I ran out of gas. Well, Mr. Scary, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Without a doubt, the boy was ashamed. He was really embarrassed of his behavior. So he apologized to the boys in his dorm for the scary, creepy things he had said before their bedtime. He also promised to buy more gas to the camp director. <laughs> well, he will do that when he gets his first job. <laughs> But I guess the director didn't believe him because he sighed heavily. 
First thing in the morning, he called the boy's parents to tell them the horrible story their son had told the others. About a black, black hand and a coffin on wheels and the horrible trick he had played the night before. For some reason, only his mother was frightened. His dad, on the other hand, was not afraid, but instead he promised to handle the situation. So, you think no one could ever be afraid of an innocent bike? But certainly you could. Today, you will hear an incredible, an amazing, heartbreaking story about a bicycle. Every child always has a birthday once a year. And, as you can imagine, it doesn't scare anyone. But Gasha was very worried because of what he had been promised to get for his birthday. Oh, how terrible, a bike! Gasha was really afraid of bikes. He once imagined himself rushing down the street, riding that huge two-wheeled scary monster. The wheels were spinning furiously, shaking the metal frame. The curved handlebars were breaking away from his hands. Unable to hang on to them, he flies off the beast and lands hard on the ground. Totally embarrassed, left with scuffed knees and a huge lump on his forehead. There was no one to save poor little Gasha. Usually, Gasha's grandmother protects him from any accidents. Sweetie, be careful on the swings. You'll fall head over heels. Darling, don't climb on the ladder. You'll have a bad fall. My dear, don't touch the rake. You'll hurt yourself. His grandmother always stood guard, making sure that Gasha was safe from any possible dangers. But that's something that no one, not even the fastest granny in the world, could be ready for. The bike couldn't be stopped. And Gasha couldn't be protected from any accident. That's truly terrible. Gasha was already nervous about his birthday when the spooky bite started haunting him at night. When the moon rose in the sky, bam! The ghost bike started rolling softly on its phantom wheels. Its ghostly pedals were creaking and it started moving by itself. The bell was ringing and the lights were blinking frightfully. And imagine how horrified Gosha was when the morning of his birthday finally arrived. And when he opened his present, there it was. The scariest bike in the whole world. There he was rolling the two-wheeled miracle out of the courtyard when suddenly, what a cool bike. Gosher heard an unfamiliar voice. He raised his eyes and saw a girl standing in front of him with a helmet on her head, pads on her elbows and knees, and a worn out skateboard at her feet. Can I go for a ride, asked the girl. And bam, while Gasha blinked his eyes, she was already riding it away. Frightened, Gasha cried out. Be careful, little girl. Oh, you'll fall. Be careful, you'll break a leg. The girl just kept riding and laughing, making figure eights, while Gasha watched it all, feeling pretty jealous. Well, she finally stopped, breaking sharply near Gasha. Wow, that was cool. And aren't you afraid of falling and hurting yourself? You have to look ahead, not under the wheels. That way you won't fall off. Well, come on, just give it a try. Don't worry, I'll go beside you to keep you safe. Then they began riding together around the courtyard. At first, they were going slow, of course, and then racing. And to this day, do you know who has suffered? No, not Gasha. Grandma. She was at the window watching everything and sighing. But Gasha never heard her sighs. 
And it is not just the bike. He is now learning how to ride the skateboard. Oh, what a great birthday. That was unforgettable. So, my dear friends, I'll tell you something. Your grandma doesn't worry in vain, that's for sure. But learn how to ride a bike anyway. Well, or a skateboard. Or even roller skates. Then you'll finally realize that they're not scary at all, but very fun and useful things. Dear fellows, today I'm going to tell you a very scary and terrible story about how one girl was afraid of doctors and the awful things that happened to her one day. Late, late one night, Seema prepared some dinner to her toys. From modeling clay, she made black, black cutlets. She also made them some cream of wheat porridge. She sat her dolls and began to treat them. A piece for Grandma, a piece for Grandpa, one for Mommy, and so on. In short, Seema had fed all the dolls her cooking. And at the same time, she ate herself too. Then it was night. Seema laid in her bed, but she could not sleep. Seema's stomach was gurgling like a swamp. She should have told her mother as soon as possible, but Seema was afraid that if she did, her mom would immediately call the doctor. And that would just be terrible. It was better to suffer. My stomach will be stronger for aches. Suddenly, Seema heard someone very close, breathing hard. Seema got on the bed and tried to see who was there crying in the closet? It seemed no one was there. Only the porcelain doll, Louisa, sat in the corner. And then, in the moonlight, Seema noticed that Louisa's big glass eyes were overflowing with tears. Suddenly, someone moaned softly under Seema's bed. Seema looked, and there, the teddy bear, was lying and squealing. Oh, my tummy, my tummy. And immediately, from all sides, her toys began to moan. Simoshka, call an ambulance. Our stomachs are aching from your porridge and cutlets. Seema trembled all over. What do you mean, ambulance? Doctors, this is the most terrible thing in the world. If the awful doctor comes because of an emergency, he'll immediately prescribe us all a terrible and bitter medicine. He will make you all show your tongues, and without mercy, he will shove a spoon in your mouth. And those who cry and resist, the doctor will grab and take them away into the hospital. But apparently, the tourists didn't care with whom or where they would go. Oh, our bellies hurt. They were crying and wouldn't quiet down. And now, Seema's stomach was so twisted that before her eyes, there were pink and blue stripes, some orange spots, and tons of green clouds. Also, there were pink dragons eating donuts while flying around in the green clouds. Seema only had time to think, look at all the donuts the dragons have eaten. And then she flew somewhere else. A long time or short time after, Seema finally woke up. Then she touched her stomach. It didn't seem to hurt. Seema opened her eyes and didn't quite know how she ended up in a strange room with white walls. With nothing to do, Seema hit the shiny button. Then bam, the door opened and the snow maiden came in, all clean, white, and smiling. Well, now she's going to wish me a happy new year, thought Seema. But the snow maiden was not at all the snow maiden. She was a doctor. And she didn't give Seema bitter medicine at all. She just patted her on the head, touched her tummy, 
and told Seema. It would be better to eat oranges, not awful inventions of clay. If you hadn't eaten all this stuff, you wouldn't have been rushed to the hospital today. Well, this hospital isn't that unpleasant, thought Seema. The lady doctor isn't scary at all. Next time, don't be afraid of her and just tell her what is wrong. That is right. No need to fear a doctor, but a cook. Listen to me. Some of them cook without even reading a book. A boy named Pasha was afraid of every story fairy tale villain. Sometimes, after reading fairy tales, he would imagine different things. Then he was afraid and even scared other children with these scary characters. And now, I will tell you what a terrible story came out of this. Once upon a time, the Class 4B went camping. They chose the place, set up tents, gathered around the campfire, and Pasha said, It's a bad idea to camp here. In this forest, Baba Yaga lives here, for sure. You'll see. She'll show you. She'll put someone on a spatula and shove him in the oven. Of course, they didn't believe him. And in the morning... Horrible! Who is this? Pasha was bitten so badly by mosquitoes that you couldn't recognize him. Look at me, shouted Pasha. It is Baba Yaga who ordered the mosquitoes to drink all of my blood. Of course, everybody laughed at him, and a girl, Sveta, gave him some mosquito spray. In the evening, Pasha sprayed his tent for mosquitoes and said, You'll see, Baba Yaga will come tonight for sure. She'll come and eat all of us and ride on our bones. Definitely. At night, the horror will come. How it rumbled and how it glittered. And the next morning, Pasha's boots were full of water. I'm positive that Baba Yaga conjured up the rain, screamed Pasha, and poured the water out of his boots. Of course, everybody laughed at him. He shouldn't have left his boots outside. A boy named Dima gave him his spare dry sneakers. The group gathered in the woods for raspberries, and Pasha said, I'm not going with you, because in this dark forest lives Baba Yaga in a hut on chicken legs. Around the hut is a fence made of the skis from missing skiers, and on the fence hang baskets from lost mushroom hunters. Once again, everyone laughed at him. A girl named Tanya gave him a pot and a bag of oats. Then cut porridge, she said. We'll come back and have porridge with the raspberries for lunch. The group came back from the woods with the raspberries, and Pasha was sleeping. The porridge burned in the pot, and the flames of the fire leaped out, burning the dry grass and moving towards the tents. The children trampled out the fire, and one boy woke Pasha and said, Why didn't you keep watch of the fire and the porridge? It wasn't me, it was Baba Yaga. She put me to sleep so we wouldn't eat her raspberries. Here she comes, flying in a mortar, waving the pestle and the broom to sweep her tracks. Indeed, there was the noise of thunder over the forest. The wind whistled, the trees bent over, and then a blue helicopter landed on the campsite. A man in uniform came out of it. Pasha ran and asked him, Are you Baba Yaga? No, said the man. I'm not even the immortal Kashi. We are firemen of the emergency service, and we fly around the forest watching out for fires. I saw your fire and someone lying near without moving. We decided to check whether there was a fire. No, a girl said. 
Sasha fell asleep by the fire. It's all Baba Yaga's fault. And we were careful with fire. Good for you, kids, said the fireman. For that, you get ice cream and a free movie about important fire safety regulations in the forest. And we'll take Sleepyhead Pasha with us to the helicopter so he can see and confirm that there is no Baba Yaga in the woods. You aren't afraid of heights, right? After that, Pasha realized that it was not necessary to be afraid of Baba Yaga, only of the forest fire. And don't you ever leave a campfire in the forest unattended. So, are any of you afraid of insects? Who shivers when they see a spider? Who runs from a dragonfly? Now I'm going to tell you a spooky story, which happened to a girl called Anyuta. Listen very carefully and tremble. Anyuta was very afraid of all kinds of bugs. When she saw a moth, she immediately hid under the table. Oh, poor me! When she saw an ant, she immediately climbed a tree. Oh, poor me! One time, when her younger brother, Baka, went for a walk, Anyuta's mother asked her to help clean the house. Anyuta, get the vacuum cleaner from the closet and vacuum the carpet in the living room. But Anyuta couldn't go to the closet. There was a spider spinning perfectly its web. Anyuta opened the door slowly. A horrible fear ran up and down her spine. It was pitch dark inside the closet. Beware! How could she get the vacuum from there? Walking through a spider web is not for me. I'll find the vacuum by touch, that's it. Anyuta cautiously opened the closet door a bit wider so that the spider wouldn't notice her and started taking out everything she could without looking. First, she got her father's ski, then took out a globe, and then she felt an electric cord. So she pulled it out. And instead of getting the vacuum cleaner from the closet, a broken lamp, an ironing board, and an old bicycle without a front wheel fell on her. Oh, said her mom, it seems we have buried treasure in the closet, but not a vacuum cleaner. Then go to the kitchen and take out the garbage. Oh, please not the garbage. There's a cockroach. It's scared and has long feelers. It will eat our girl in a second. Pat its belly and burp with content. Mustering all the courage she might have left, on Utah decided to do the following. I will grab the garbage and run quickly, and the cockroach won't be able to eat me. Anyuta grabbed the full bin, rushed to the door, and behind her, there was a terrible crunch and a horrible screech. On the stools, chairs, and tables, all around the kitchen, the garbage started falling out of the bucket. Well now, said her mom, if you don't want to take out the garbage, go to the balcony and water the flowers. Balcony? The word makes me cry for all their lives a huge butterfly. It's scarier than a spider and cockroach. And because it can fly, it will attack from above, from the left and the right. And there's no way I can win. Okay, back to the flowers as quietly as possible. Maybe I'll fight back with the watering can. Anyuta started watering the flowers. And the scary butterfly started flapping its gigantic wings. The girl rushed to one corner of the balcony and hit two flower pots. She rushed to the other corner and lost the watering can. She ran back inside and hid under the table. Puddles of water and dirt are everywhere on the balcony. Many things from the closet and garbage are all over. I'm wondering who did all this mess. Who, the butterfly, the cockroach, the spider? Her mom sighed sadly and cleaned up the balcony. 
She gathered up the garbage and vacuumed the carpet. At that time, Fafka, Anuta's brother, came home and went to her right away. Look at this beautiful ladybug I have. Do you want to pet it? Uh, aren't you afraid of it? Asked Anuta. Of course not. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Look how tiny it is, and look at me. I'm big and strong, said her little brother. And then Anuta understood. Creepy crawlings and other scary bugs only seem dangerous to us, my good friends. They're a bit smaller than the size of a safety pin. We're a thousand times bigger. There's no reason to shiver. So, so, so. Where could all of the cartoons be hiding? Hmm. Let's start an investigation. Ah! One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look for cartoons to pick. I will press this microphone. Masha and the bear. 